Okay, welcome everyone. I'm Amy Below, Vice President for Program Operations. I've been with with SSP for many years, and um, I'm happy to be here with you all tonight. This is our second webinar, and we're excited to have so many more people registered this time and and attending here tonight. I would ask that we'll we'll have time for questions. Um, if you have questions you'd like to put in the chat please direct them to everyone in the chat and not to one specific person. Besides the three staff here, we have some alumni. Um, you'll hear from them later. You'll also have a chance um, to, to put those questions in the chat after you've heard our presentation and um, we'll answer them there and we'll select some to answer out loud for everyone as well. So I thought I'd kick, it off, kick us off with telling you a little bit about SSP. So you're sure you know why you're here and, and what you're learning about. So I'm gonna tell you what SSP is by telling you what it is not. SSP is not a camp. It happens in the summer and it happens with uh, a bunch of teenagers coming together to do fun things. But that's about where the similarities end. Um, SSP is very structured and rigorous. And while there is um, a little bit of uh, an occasion here and there to do recreational things, it's mostly not recreational. You're not um, just picking and choosing what you wanna do and having lots of leisure time. It's not a vacation. It's also, SSP is not a school. You are all familiar with school. Even if you have never been to camp, you've all been to school of some sort. And SSP is very much not school. At SSP, there are no grades. You will not be ranked first or second or anything in your class. You won't have a GPA. You won't have test scores. You'll get feedback, um, like if you've ever had a job or in the future when you have a job. In your job, you get evaluated by your colleagues telling you what's going really well and what's maybe not going so well. So that's like SSP. Um, you'll get individual feedback, your group will get feedback, but you're not getting grades and you're not competing with one another. You're working together and it's not about who gets the highest score because there is no score. You're working on learning because you love learning as do your peers at SSP. SSP is like having an experience, an immersive experience in experimental science this experience has evolved over six decades. We started in 1959 to meet the very specific needs of rising high school seniors who are talented, intellectually curious, and motivated in STEM. And we very carefully went through all of those words and they're all important. And we didn't write also a few sophomores. So if you're a sophomore and you're here, sophomores can also apply. Um, most sophomores who are uh, getting into SSP are academically at the level of a junior performing above a typical sophomore. Um, and we're trying to capture you at this ex in this exper experience where you're getting ready to apply to college. So it's very critically timed at that summer before your senior year. And everyone who attends SSP is talented in some way, not all identically, intellectually curious. You want to be there not so you can get the best grade, but so you can learn and experience and motivated in STEM. And what that looks like is a lot of different things. There's not one specific way to show that you're motivated in STEM. SSP is immersive as if you were on a submarine with colleagues going on a research mission. You will be together all of the time. You will be isolated from the rest of the world. Well, you can call your parents. You'll have your phone with you. You can text them and tell them you're okay. But you won't be able to do other things. You're not going to be able to study for an SAT or also be enrolled in a virtual college class. Um, you can't really have any other obligations happening while you're SSP because you are in your group, in your cohort, working on something that is going to take all of your time. And SSP is also like being on the open highway and there is no speed limit. So in high school, maybe it's like we use this car analogy, you're in a really fast car right now because you have a lot of talent and motivation and you're in high school driving on a very crowded street where there's lots of traffic signals and you can only go as fast as everyone else is going. 
But SSP uh, removes all of those obstacles in your way where you can learn as quickly as you can learn. So those roadblocks are removed for you. You can go as fast as you want to. So when you finish SSP, the experience will help you focus your personal goals and aspirations and will help you develop confidence to rise to new heights. Some of the people who attend SSP go on to education and a career in one of those specific sciences in astrophysics, biochemistry, or genomics, but maybe not, and that's okay. At SSP, you're there to try out doing science and if you love doing science, you'll you'll learn that you love it. If you don't love it, that's okay too. And you've learned that about yourself before you go to college. So that's going to help you refine your decisions. So how does SSP do this? We have a very specific formula where each program has eight faculty and either 24 or 36 participants and everyone works in a research team with two others. So there's always research teams of three. You always have this faculty team. You will get to know your faculty really well. You'll be comfortable going up to Dr. H or Dr. R and saying, hey, I have a question about that. These are university professors, and they are going to sit with you at dinner and chat with you about your favorite movie or whatever else. They might play uh, spike ball in the grass with you. You will get to know your faculty team. You'll be living and learning along with them as well. And while we have this structure in place, everything at SSP follows our values. And these are found on the website. So if you'd like to refer back to these later, you can. The SSP values are collaboration, community, exploration, inclusiveness, and integrity. And I think later on when you hear from alumni, you'll probably hear uh, examples of a lot of those things because they very much define what is happening at SSP. Okay, Courtney, I think it's over to you. Yeah, thank you for that, Amy. Um, so we've gotten a big picture of kind of the the values and the general things that are are driving SSP. Um, so another question that you're probably wondering next is why. You know, why would this sort of program, why would these benefits be something that are appealing to you and your personal, um, where you are personally right now? So here are some questions that SSP is going to help you answer by the end of the program. Um, one thing is, what does it feel like to be a STEM major at a selective college? Um, maybe you're kind of newer to thinking about STEM for the first time. Maybe you've been thinking about STEM um, for quite a while and know you want to do something in the sciences or in math or engineering or those sorts of fields. Um, but like, what does that actually feel like to be on a college campus, to be amongst peers that are similarly driven in the same ways that you are in those fields? And so you'll really get a kind of sense of the kind of programs, the kind of things that you're doing as a STEM major at a selective school while you're on physically the college campuses. Um, Additionally, something that we're going to help you work through is what does it feel like to be a scientist doing research? Um, certainly a lot of students by the time of graduating high school, probably most students, um, have not had the opportunity to actually be in a lab doing actual physical pipetting if you're, you know, in a, in a wet lab or life sciences or, or something like that, or, you know, actually going out to your, your telescope to track your asteroids. Um, a lot of people haven't had that kind of physical hands-on experience quite yet while they're in high school. And so we're going to make sure you have that exposure. Um, you're taking your notes. You're, you're living that true life of a scientist while you're on campus. Um, in addition, we're going to help you think through what it feels like to be a member of a community of people who are just as intellectually curious and motivated as you. Um, we are all kind of coming from these different backgrounds, different types of schools. A lot of people are, you know, go-getters. Um, at our schools and, you know, a lot of our other classmates are less go-getters maybe. And so what what's going to be in common for you and your peers when you're at SSP is that all of you are here because you are interested in doing STEM. That's how you're choosing to, to spend your summer. Um, and that's kind of a motivating factor for you. So a lot of people who are excited about science, maybe for the first time in your life before coming to college, that's something we're excited to be able to give um, to students as well. 
So after, again, after SSP, we're hoping that we can help you puzzle through those, those questions that you might have had before the program. And to take um, another kind of think about the benefits that end up coming from this, you know, if there aren't a lot of people who are getting into SSP, our, our admission rate tends to float around 10%. It's a very common question on our webinars is our selectivity generally floating around 10% for all programs. Um, so why apply? One is, it's a good practice for college apps. You, we're hoping you're not applying to various programs and colleges like solely based on your likelihood of being admitted. Um, it's a good practice to think about the things you might want to write about in your essays, um, to kind of get experience asking your teachers if they'll write recommendations for you, um, and just getting comfortable with the people around your campus. So good practice for college apps. Good practice as well for just taking a risk and maybe not getting into something. Um, for college, for pretty much anything you're gonna go, gonna go do in life, there will be opportunities to fail and to learn. And so that's kind of part of what comes with that as well. And then once you're at SSP, you'll also continue to fail. Uh, if you haven't experienced this yet, that's definitely part of the scientific process. Failure can be considered results in a lot of ways. So um, think about that in that way as well. Also, most importantly, a lot of people who apply to SSP don't think necessarily they're going to get into SSP. Some people are very confident they're going to get into SSP and they don't end up getting into SSP. Um, and so there's really no true way to know if you have the passion and have the motivation to do something like this, you should apply because you never really know what happens. And if you don't apply, your chance is going to be zero. So think about those things. And to kind of help you think through some additional FAQ because if we were to try to get through absolutely everything that you want to know about SSP by the end of this program, we would be on here for multiple hours. I'm going to kind of point out some of the key areas on our website that will um, help you understand some of the, the requirements and things like that, and for you to take a deeper dive after our call. So let's go over to ssp.org or summerscience.org. We'll also get you there. All right. So what I want to point out to you on the SSP website, especially if this is one of your first times really hearing about SSP, I know a lot of folks got invited as part of our, um, our outreach. So maybe you just kind of were interested in this and decided to hop on the call. So this might be your first time looking at the website. If that is the case, going to try to highlight especially where I think you should take a look at. The two primary tabs are going to be the Explore tab and the Apply tab. The Explore tab are particularly aimed at helping you understand what SSP is, um, the nature of SSP, whether SSP is a good fit for you, and those sorts of questions. So the biggest picture is going to be, what is SSP? A lot of this content was uh, more or less covered during this presentation. And so a good piece for you to look at and helping determine whether you want to continue to apply is going to be this SS is SSP for you page. Um, you can watch some of our old uh, kind of videos coming from our applicants. And then this tends to be a pretty common question as well as like, what is SSP looking for? What kind of participants are admitted to SSP? Um, and so this I think is tends to be a pretty good section to help understand that we're not looking for anyone in particular. We're looking for people from a variety of different backgrounds who are motivated in STEM, um, excited to do STEM, and kind of helps you highlight and focus uh, what you want to talk about there. So recommend checking out this page. Um, in addition, another kind of common question we get is like how to choose between the various uh, areas of study um, or the different programs that we have on our campuses. And so they're pretty different projects. Um, and so if you tend to be somebody who is more, you know, math or physics driven, you might be more drawn to something like astrophysics that didn't work. Let me try that again. Um, so check out the details of the program here um, in terms of like what things are being asked of you, a detailed description of, you know, what's going on during the project. You'll see, and it's the same general format for each program, astrophysics, biochemistry, and genomics are our three programs. You'll see like an outline of the program at the top, and then you'll see some topics that are covered. And there's there tends to be some interesting content as well, like videos, quotes, and some photographs. 
Um, so go ahead and check out the programs in detail to kind of figure out what suits your vibe the best. Um, if you're interested in science in general, you could be interested in a lot of them. So just choose the one that, you know, feels resonate, feel feels to you like you resonate most with it. And other things about learning about the, um, the program, we did recently add some program dates and host sites for the year ahead. So you can go ahead and check out some of these. Um, we are potentially going to add a couple more programs to this list, but when thinking about dates and things like that, these are good models to think about the different start dates and um, trying to make sure you're ready to go at least by, by late June. So keep an eye on this page. And then similarly for the host campuses that will be posted there. For So you've decided to go ahead and apply to SSP. You say, this looks great. I know what program I want to apply to you and I need a little bit more information. You're going to want to go to the apply tab at that point. Um, the actual application is going to be here. Go ahead and click this link. Um, and then the uh, there are some videos for presentations we've had in the past, as well as this webinar that we are currently on. Um, a thing to note here is the application deadline as well. In the past, we've had different deadlines for international and domestic students, and that is no longer the case. So everybody's deadline is going to be February 16th this year. Um, other key things to check out are our prereqs. They're going to be different depending on the program that you want to apply to and the year in school that you are. Um, taking a note that our sophomore requirements are a little bit more stringent just because we are expecting our sophomores to be at a higher level um, because it's just quite difficult to get in as a sophomore. Um, in addition, on the apply page, some key things that you'll want to check out are the fee and financial aid as well where you're gonna find our program fee, which for this year is gonna be about $8,800 in 2024. That is um, within that process, we actually do meet 100% of demonstrated financial need. So that means that the, the difference between your family's ability to pay based on what you submit to us financially and the cost of um, attending the program, we will meet the remainder of the cost between those two numbers. And as a general outline for that, generally families making under $70,000 per year will be able to attend SSP for free, including travel expenses and including um, some stipends to help uh, navigate the costs that you actually actually expend on the campuses. And then if your family makes under $130,000, you'll receive some sort of discount in general is how it's worked in the past. And potentially those numbers will actually go up this year so that... Uh, that we're able to help people a little bit more. Um, so that's some things to think about. There's some FAQ as well that it directs you to. The financial aid FAQ also lives in the regular admission FAQ. So you can go ahead and navigate there and you see the financial aid section. This is a very extensive list um, that includes all sorts of tidbits about um, you know, the, pre the prereqs and uh, what we're expecting and all of those fun things. So FAQ is probably one of my top recommended pages for these kind of finer details that you're thinking about um, as you're really considering applying, because it's it's going to answer a lot of the questions that emerge for you kind of later in the process when you're applying. Um, some parent FAQ is also under the apply page if you're a parent on the call and um, kind of are thinking about some of the things that we are uh, going to have on the campuses. So that is kind of, there's a lot of things to explore, but those are the two kind of key pages we really like to direct people to, to learn in more detail about SSP. Um, and excitingly, beyond just reading the FAQ, we have some student, some alumni on the call who are going to help walk us through a lot of the FAQ that people tend to have. So I'm going to stop sharing. Um, and then if you have had questions that have emerged to you during this call, please do start adding them to the chat and we'll make sure to circle back on those. Um, I'll also go ahead and start reading off uh, some of the summary ideas and questions from the pre-submitted questions. So let me stop sharing. Ugh. All right, um, so to kick off everything, I'm actually going to turn it over to our alumni to introduce themselves 
if our alumni may be starting with um, Arwen, because you are the first person I see on my screen, um, if you don't mind sharing with everybody your SSP um, year and where you were located and the program you're doing and where you physically live now. Hi, my name is Erwin. I was an Indiana University Genomics member in the class of 23, and I currently live in Maryville, Tennessee. Feel free to just keep handing it on to the next alum as well. Sure, I'll hand it on to Sophia. Hey guys, I participated in the last program in biochemistry, also in Indiana, Bloomington. I'm from Brazil. I'm from a countryside, a very small countryside town in Brazil. And I'm currently, I have con current, sorry, currently graduated from high school because of Southern Hemisphere. <laughs> so I'm gonna pass to Lillian. Hi, my name is Lillian. I did astrophysics at the University of Colorado Boulder and I'm from Massachusetts. I'm going to pass it on to Will. Hi, <clears throat> my name is Will. I did the program in genomics in 2022 at Purdue University. Um, I'm from Colorado and I go to school at Brown University right now. And I'll pass it to Delano. Hello, I'm Delano. Um, I did the program at UNC Chapel Hill in um, 2023. I'm currently in Gilbert, Arizona. All right, great. I think that was everybody. Thanks to our alums for, did it, Lillian, Lillian, did you get a chance to go? Okay, perfect. I think that was everybody. Um, and so we're gonna start going to some of our pre-submitted questions um, while some of the questions start filtering in from the chat. So a common kind of theme amongst our pre-registration questions was about, um, was about the kind of balance that people experience between like the individual and group work, the people asking that question probably have browsed through our website a little bit and see that um, their cohorts of three actually work in teams. This is maybe something that uh, advanced students are suspicious of because group work in high school is not always the most um, fun. So um, can people kind of elaborate on like the balance of group work and like, was it uncomfortable to be working more in the group setting um, at first? Sure, I can talk about group work. I absolutely loved my group. I was with one other senior and a junior and we got along really well together. Our experiment was something, so at Genomics, we were working on antibiotic resistance. We were trying to simulate antibiotic resistance and it was something where we all had to watch bacteria very, very carefully and be really attentive over that. So we developed a team dynamic really quickly. It's a lot more group work than individual. Uh, we had problem sets every week and those were individual, but every day we were working together in a team to work on those problem sets. It's like you have to, you can work in a group to get the answers, but what you submit has to sh represent your own understanding, which is, it's very similar to what it would be like in a workforce. It's a lot less scary than working on group projects in a high school because everybody there is super into STEM and super into the project and everybody is super committed to finishing the project together. Any other thoughts from our alums on the balance of group work? Did that sum it up pretty well? I can talk a little bit about my group. So I, I love my group. And something interesting about it, like in biochem, we have to, to study a protein and then produce an inhibitor for it. So in order to do that, we had two, I mean, three main tasks during the whole program which was basically the lab experiments, managing the data, and also working with the molecular operating environment. And we had three people in our group, so we separated those things. I did the lab work, 
one of my friends did the data and the other, the molecular operating environment. So it was great. And anytime we had questions about, you know, each other parts, we just switched so that everyone could do everything in the project. It was basically that. Awesome. Thank you guys for that. Um, another question people have is kind of more on like the um, the social life aspects as well. Like we know we're here to do a research project together. Um, what are some of the things that people have enjoyed doing during the SSP programs while not inside of lecture or inside of doing uh, the actual research? Yeah, I can take this one. Um, yeah, so after lectures, we'd go back to the dorms and um, we played a lot of spike ball um, and some like other small little sports and games. Um, we even held like a sports ball, uh, a spike ball tournament. And I know like another campus, it's like a beach volleyball thing. Um, there's also some field trips as well. Like we went to the beach. Um, uh, we even went to the movies um, on Sunday. We had some movie nights as well. So uh, there are a lot, a lot of social events. It's also lunch and dinner as well when you're eating. Um, so yeah, like yeah, but do, between lectures, there's a lot of things we can do. Um, so uh, Apple can even like, I think brought us a Wii and we picked it up to one of the TVs and we like played a lot of Jeopardy in some Death Dance. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of things we can do. Um, I think that the social life definitely tied together the SSP experience. So I went to a campus in Colorado and we often went hiking for our field trips. And we also went to a dark sky site where we laid in the mountains of rural Colorado to see the stars. I can also add like the Indiana Bloomington experience for us was amazing because we had the security of getting out of the campus and walking around of the town. And usually in the in the weekends, we we always went to the to the same dining place. I mean just the same restaurant. It was it was a sushi restaurant. It was amazing. And when we went back to the dorms, we usually watched JoJo's Bizarre Adventures <laughs> or played board games in the, in the dorms. And we used to cook things together too. We had a lot of fun. That's awesome. And um, another kind of theme of questions comes around like, life after SSP, is it just SSP and then you forget about each other? Or what is the community like after SSP? Do you still talk to people you had during your program? And then some questions in a similar vein revolve around like mentorships. Did you see anybody that was inspirational during your program? Um, and have you stayed connected to like anybody you consider a mentor? I can answer this um, since I did the program almost two years ago. Um, certainly still keep in contact with group members and peers from the program, made close friends through that who will be in contact with for a long time, um, as well as the faculty made close relationships with them that are still blossoming. Um, and there's also opportunities for things like letters of recommendation for future programs. Um, so you definitely develop some pretty close um, and lasting relationships. There's also the SSP mentor program for after when you complete um, your summer, you can have the opportunity to be paired with an older alumni. Um, and that's really helpful for like, the college admission process. Um, and then there's also an SSP meetup every year in a certain city. So this last year it was in Boston. Um, so you can meet up and see people from your program and also meet new people who also did SSP. I can also speak to that. I'm still really close with my lab mates and other people from my program. Uh, we spent a lot of time together every single day. It's like you kind of all become 
siblings like you're spending that much time with all these people so it would be so weird to just stop talking to them off the bat but I'm still in contact with a lot of them and I also did the SSB the mentorship program for college applications and I love that my mentor was also really awesome because you're meeting all these people that have such like-minded they're so like-minded with you and they have such similar experiences to you that it's really hard to let go of those friends um, especially with college apps right now because we're all seniors right so you start the summer before your senior year so we're kind of all going through it together and so it's nice to have those people to rely on cool um as a little bit of a break for our alums gonna we we touched on this a little bit when i was talking about the website but seeing a lot of questions about this in the chat as well as in um, the pre-registration, I'd say most of the questions this time were about uh, what we are looking for in an applicant or what are the top qualities for admitting an applicant? Um, you know, do I need research to ad admit an applicant? All of those sorts of questions. So you haven't kind of maybe started thinking about completely college yet, but colleges are gonna tell you very similar things that um, we look at applications in a very holistic way. So. It's not so that we are looking first at, you know, academics, secondly at essays or some sort of ranked or scored or anything like that process. We use something that is called holistic admissions, where we are looking at every aspect of your application. We're looking at, you know, how much we resonate with you, how much you resonate with the values that we talked about during our presentation. Are you somebody who could be a good collaborator? Are you somebody who seems like you would actually like SSP? Um, those are all things we're going to be considering and helping us determine if you're a good fit. It's not that we're looking for you to have 10 research publications or nine Olympiads or anything like that. Um, what we're looking for most of all is things like fit and whether you are a person who would like our program. Um, and I think that plays a big role in what you should think about when crafting your application. And that's that we just want to know who you are. Um, we want to get to know you as best as we can, and if that ends up being a good fit for what we're looking for, then that's how that will play out. And if it doesn't seem like, you know, that you resonate a lot with SSP and what we're looking for, then that's um, then that's a factor as well. So try not to stress too much about, like, <laughs> the different aspects and how heavily they're weighted and thinking about kind of the end results and just think about it kind of being a lethargic process for you and trying to put yourself on paper. You know, we can't meet you. We can't completely have a full sense of who you are as an applicant, but we, um, you know, all you can do is try to showcase the different aspects of yourself that help contribute to who you are as an applicant. Um, any other thoughts on that, Amy? You're muted, Amy. Yeah, thinking about fit, um... This ties into a few other questions that I have seen in the chat about doing a research paper or being published or extending, you know, your work into something that's your own. I think if that is your goal, if your goal is to um, get a published, your own published paper out of SSP, SSP is not the right place for you. Um, the SSP experience is about learning how to do research on a team and going through those steps. You will do your own paper with your team, but the the structure of SSP and the intellectual property that goes along with that means that you cannot individually publish your work or submit it to a science fair competition. Some um, some very few participants are able to work with their um, academic faculty if they are willing afterwards to continue the project in some way. So add a component, take it off in another direction or add something to it to make it their own. And that is fine if your faculty is willing to do it that with you. Um, but research is, um, learning how to do research with a team is a goal, but getting your own published work out of it, um, if that is your goal, it's not the right place for you at SSP. In terms of applying and what we're looking for, it's it's extremely hard to describe what fit is. So this is meant to be a research exper experience. If you've had lots of lots of research experiences or even just a couple, um, what new thing are you looking to get out of another research experience? Why are you applying? 
Um, so you really have to think about if I've already done research, if I've already worked in a lab, if I've already worked with someone on a telescope um, taking observations, what more is SSP able to give to me? Um, on the flip side of that is if you're worried because you have never done any research, you don't even know how that would happen for a high school student, that's completely fine. SSSP is supposed to be an introduction to that. And we have a mixture of both kinds of students in our groups. And I think all the alumni could probably think of, okay, there are a couple people who had never done any research and there are a couple of people who had done something really interesting and in depth already. And both of those are okay. And we make teams where there's a range of experiences. Some people have done Olympiads, some people have never heard of Olympiads and those are both okay. So um, in terms of demonstrating your interest in science that can come from any direction at all, there's uh, you know hundreds of ways to show your interest in motivation in science. It doesn't have to be research. It doesn't have to be Olympiads. Um, it can be, but it doesn't have to be. Did that answer the question, uh, Courtney, or was there another component that I missed? No, that is, that's perfect. Okay, okay. Um, another, like, another pretty common theme in the pre-submitted questions are, was about um, just, like, interest in the academic topics that are being presented. And so can anybody expand a little bit on, like, maybe something that you took away from the academic components of your research experience? Like what's a new skill set you maybe learned or like a, a mentor or, or guest speaker or just like something intellectual that you didn't realize you would have before coming to SSP and something you were able to take out of it? Yeah, I can answer this one. Um, definitely, I think with the research experience, I guess working collaboratively was like probably the biggest thing came out of SSP for, like being able to ask others for help and to give others help when they asked you. Um, and you know, trying to figure out, I remember like there'd be, a, there was a really hard problem we had to do for some for programming. And we were at like nine of us were at a chalkboard and we were all like drawing possible like uh, method to solve, method, um, possible solutions. And we were all just like working together and you never felt like you had any there was no competition in the work um, when doing completing the work because you know you were all trying to do the same project um, together, so you really get those skills and those interpersonal skills um, and skills that really help you succeed in college and in the workforce. So that's kind of what I got into. It. I absolutely agree with that. Um, learning how to work collaboratively is such an amazing experience, and it's so nice to do it at SSB in a forgiving learning environment. Um, you don't have grades, that sort of thing. It's nice to have that comfort of knowing that there are other people that are struggling just as much as you are and going through the same experience as you and being able to work with them. And another thing I learned, um, the guest lecture series is actually one of my favorite parts of SSP. It was like every week or every other week we would have a guest lecturer come in and one of them uh, his name is Dr. Ankar Dahlia, and he works with the locomotion of bacteria and how they do, they uh, reach out and take, um, take DNA from the environment back into themselves. And it was so amazing, not just to hear a researcher talk about the science that they do, but also to know how excited that he was to be able to study that sort of thing. It was just really inspiring as someone who wants to eventually work in research to be able to see what that is actually like for him. Something I learned from SSB is that like sometimes you you have to accept that you don't know something and you need to ask for help. And honestly, I was a bit shy about that in the beginning, but by the end of it, I had I, I usually ask for help at least three times a day. So it was it was something good to learn. And also you learn like when to lead and when to let other people lead and to avoid conflicts too, because it's super, sometimes it can be very stressful. So you have to manage those, those human connections so that you can keep working together in balance. And that was something I really learned. It was an amazing experience.
Cool. Um, that's really, really insightful. Thank you guys. And another kind of insight I think people are um, are asking about for uh, this group is seems like people have a more, you know, are developing their interest in science and are kind of looking at multiple projects and, and thinking through those. Did you guys know before um, applying, did you feel pretty confident about the program you were applying to? What helped you reach the, the decision that you reached in terms of what to apply to? Um, and like, did you have a lot of, you know, extreme, like a lot of background in the topic before you applied? So questions around those sorts of things. Um, I can take this one. So I did the astrophysics program and I was really interested in physics and astronomy before. So I found a lot of fit in applying. So it wasn't a hard decision for me, but I would say, um, to consider applying to astrophysics if you really liked your math classes especially and there's also a lot of coding so um you learn to code really well as well i know a lot of people it tends to be difficult to pick between biochem and genomics especially um because they're they're kind of similar programs some of the skills are very similar i know i found myself super very much struggling to pick between the two. Uh, I had a friend who had done biochem. I didn't have a lot of experience with either one outside of my science classes. But uh, what I ended up doing to pick actually was I read the program descriptions on the website and then I looked at the research that the professors leading the program do. So I looked into their research to figure out kind of what kind of stuff that they knew about that they might be able to teach me and ended up making my decision based on their research experience and based on things that other participants had said and that sort of thing to kind of decide which program. For me, I had some previous experiences in molecular biology due to mm -hmm science olympiads, but I have never done a specific, a specific research on biochemistry or into STEM before SSB. I only had some science classes, the experience on olympiads and also our research in social sciences that I had done a few years ago. So that was basically it. Um, yeah, um, I also really like physics. I actually thought I wanted to go into astrophysics, so that's why I applied to the astrophysics program. I did have, a, I did have some friends that like also like biology a lot too, but they ultimately chose astrophysics. So, um, yeah. Um. But can I just interject, Courtney? Um, there are several questions about um, the admissions rate and how many um, per program. Um, and that kind of ties in like, what, how do you decide what to apply to? Um, please don't decide based on the numbers of spots that we have, because we don't know how many are going to, going to apply to each. So you might know, okay, well, there's only 24 seats for each genomics program. Um, and so that there are less opportunities for uh it seems like there's a less of a, a less chance for you in genomics than biochem which has 36 but we don't know if everyone is thinking like that and no one applies to genomics because of that fear of it's harder to get into then your chances are actually going to be better because <laughs> you if you're the one applying there because people thought oh i have a better chance in biochem let me just ask you all to stop this way of thinking. We do not know the denominator until the application has closed. So we can't help you guess <laughs> what who has a better rate. Um, all of the rates with your you know, junior or sophomore or from this state or that state or this kind of person or that kind of student, if you have research, if you don't have research, the admissions rate is around 10%. Last couple of years, it's been a little bit under 10%. If you're a sophomore, it's also under 10%, probably by a little bit more, under 10. And it doesn't really matter. If the admissions rate is 8%, 
are you less likely to apply than if it's 12%? The chances are low, but they're not zero for all of the programs. It's not like you're comparing, okay, one has 10% chance and the other one has an 80% chance. Um, that's not what we're comparing here. We're comparing, you know, 8.2% versus 8.3%. Don't let that make your decision. First of all, because we don't have that information. And second of all, if you're applying just to try to like figure out your odds, figure out how to play the game, that comes can come through in your application. Just tell us what you like doing and why. Apply to the project. Um, like one of our alums said, just like read the information on the website. There's a lot there and decide which sounds more fun. And that's the one you should apply to. Let all the numbers like float away out of your brain. They don't exist right now because we truly do not know the denominator. Yeah, and Kevin just asked a similar question about, you can only apply for just one program, that is correct. You are choosing the one program that you want to apply to and you do not um, choose choose multiple. Um, another, I'm, I'm going back to the pre-registration questions quite a bit because my team is doing such a good job and my alums in the chat, so thank you for that. But um, another pre-registration pre theme was about this idea of being away from home for maybe the first time for some people, uh, being across the country, maybe being in a different state. Um, and particularly, there was some questions about um, the international experience. And I think we have an international student or two on our call. So if anyone can share a little bit about just being away from um, home and whether that was difficult um, and what the kind of community is like in terms of a, a good mixture of different sorts of people. Sure. I was about eight or so hours away from home and it was my first time ever being away from home. I had done never done sleepaway camp, anything like that. And it was, is definitely an adjustment. Part of it is learning some of that own independence and you're uh, kind of making yourself do your work, get things done and trying to develop that schedule. But once you develop that schedule, you get into a pretty good routine. And what helps is that everybody else who's there, a lot of the other kids there also had never been to a sleepaway camp or been away from home for longer than two nights at a sleepover. But um, the community that we built was really, it's a community unlike any other ever. Um, so like uh, it was, there were 12 girls in my program because I was a genomics, 24 kids. Uh, there were 12 girls in my program. And I think every day before we went to bed uh, in our dorm rooms, we would leave all the doors open and we would just kind of sit in the hallway and talk to each other right when we got back from lab. And that sort of community, that being able to rely on those other people and you get to know them so closely kind of makes it easier to be away from home. But there are also days when you do want to call your parents like six times and you do call your parents when you're walking to class or whatever. But um, it helps to be able to have a, a sense of everybody's going through the same thing. And it, although you are away from home, you kind of develop a new community and that makes it a lot easier. Um, I can answer also. I think that it's SSP is a very good transition between high school and college um, because I think it gives you a good taste of like living in dorms, um, learning like how to live by yourself and take care of your own needs while simultaneously balancing like studying and academics and all of that good stuff. Um, and I think that the sense of camaraderie you have with your peers helps the transition from being away from home um, and there's also lots of support available when you're at the program with the TAs, your site director, your peers, et cetera. I know we talked a little bit about mentorship and people we looked up to during the program um, earlier, but for people who haven't taken a deep dive, can um, can our alums explain a little bit further like what your interactions are like with the two um 
with the two instructional faculty as well as the the faculty that are more programmatic like did you get to interact much with the directors that were on your campus and how are those relationships yeah i can take this so we had two professors a site director and four tas at my campus um and our relationship with them was great uh our site director was kind of more like the um because you could say like the parent of the group almost like she was the one who um you know made sure no one was uh breaking any of the rules everyone was safe and providing um everything for us and then our professors was obviously were the ones leading the lectures um and then our tas are kind of like the ones that went, went with us during observations and help us with homework and sets um and yeah no this, this, our tas were amazing i love them they were all very helpful um we had a lot of conversations with them during our observations at night and uh, i feel like i really uh got a great relationship with them um and they uh all the, our, our professors are also amazing as well um the rectors are really fun and they would always are always open to questions um and they'd go uh they were very knowledgeable what they were talking about and they were always willing to help you if you had issues with um B sets as well so yeah i know the faculty is are all very amazing and open people so the first day or two, really scary, okay? So uh, you've never met any of these people before and you've just gotta like live with these people for a, uh, over a month. So the first day or two, it's a little bit scary, but it gets so much better, especially because you eat dinner with your professors. They sit at the tables with you. Uh, you're assigned seats, so you get, each week you get a different seating at dinner and you get so to meet so many people and talk to all these people. Um, I absolutely love my site directors and my academic directors. They're all amazing people. Um, they're so willing to help you with anything. Uh, lots of stories, lots of jokes, just people that it's just really comforting to be around and they're super happy to work with you and they love learning from you as much as you love learning from them. And our TAs were also fantastic and I'm still in touch with some of our TAs and it's really amazing um you you get used to it it might be scary at first you know you raise your hand and lecture and you say you blew out an answer I mean I did blurted out an answer is totally wrong but <laughs> once you get over yourself a little bit it gets a lot easier to keep going through and you you get used to it and the professors are all amazing and everybody wants to help you um everybody's there for you and it's a great experience I'll just add on to that um from the staff perspective, um, that's definitely the experience, the reflection that we hear from a lot of alumni. Um, and it is intentional. It is by design. We make SSP harder than any one of you can do on your own. Um, it's intentionally at a higher level academically than you have seen before. And you will fail in some way. You will be scared. You'll be in over your head. You'll be overwhelmed by design and there's a support system around you who knows that's going to happen and they will help you through it so you know like th when the team is working together first you have to figure out you know who your teammates are is it safe to talk to them are you all going to get along and then the next step is like deciding who amongst the three of you is going to be brave enough to go ask the T ta for help because you are stuck on problem set one and you don't know what to do and you're all about to burst into tears and one of you will uh, have the guts to go ask the TA for help and they're gonna run over and help you and you'll be close to them for the rest of the time. All of you, you, you know, you'll make that connection with someone and you will have that support around you. So you're, it's designed to be hard and overwhelming and stressful. It's like drinking from the fire hose. You might've seen those, those words on the website. We're throwing you in the deep end, but we're also throwing the faculty in with you. And they've done this before. Um, and they have they have training. They know what to expect, even if you don't. So they will be there for you and you'll get through it. Um, no one has ever gone home because they didn't understand calculus or the lab procedure or something like that. So there, it's, it's not possible to fail academically. You'll get dragged along. If it's difficult and you're willing to try, you will make it to the end. And just adding on that, I think that that ending part is the key, is there isn't anything negative that's going to happen to you if you don't 
pass if by the end of the the term like when you've gotten through the program like your experiments didn't work out we're not gonna write you an f we're not gonna send you negative recommendation letters nothing negative is going to come out of that experience but you are going to be in a, in a space where you're feeling challenged and you're feeling excited about completing that academic problem because of probably who you are as a person and that's what's what ends up driving people to to get through that um and to work through that challenge and so there's no there's no fear behind it um so there's no need to be like afraid of that process either um but we do we do try to challenge you and think of yourself reaching new heights that you didn't think you could reach before um, because a lot of this is about building confidence as well, uh, building confidence in your own independent skill sets, being your own independent person in a lab, um, and all of those fun things. Learning how to do your own laundry. <laughs> it's life skills for some people. Um, sometimes it's, you know, the academics come a little uh, more easily, but they've never put their clothes in a washing machine. And perhaps that's the the positive growth outcome. Um, and it can be a lot of different areas for growth, but everyone will grow and change in some way. Yeah, I can also add that it also helps that there's no grades um, in SSP. So you're doing everything from your own motivation. And there were definitely times it was like 12 o'clock in the morning or 12 o'clock midnight. And I was like trying to finish a few sets and it was really hard. Um, but my, my TAs were there and my friends were there to help me with, with it. So I never felt, even though there were definitely times I felt overwhelmed and very, you know, stressed, um, I was able to get through it and everyone around me was able to get through it. So there's nothing to worry about. In genomics, I'm sure Will probably had a similar experience, but I think we had to restart our experience maybe, or our experiment maybe four times with chemostat contaminations and re-autoclaving it, but you totally get through it and everybody's there to help you. So it all evens out in the end. I think my last question, because we have one minute left, um, will be if anybody has any favorite stories or fun stories, your favorite story that you remember from SSP, and that's what we'll end on before letting everyone go. I know it's my favorite story, but we did have an egg drop competition, and that was really fun. Um, so y'all made like a traptions and you know drop an egg from one of the bridges in one of the campus buildings. Uh, yeah, and it was, it was we like it was more teamwork because you have to partner up with someone. Um, yeah, that was definitely one of my one of my favorite memories. I think a lot of my best memories from SSP were made during meal times, especially at dinner when you can sit with your faculty, but also during lunch and breakfast, because you have um, really interesting conversations with all these people from around the country and world. And it's just really interesting to see um, how all their lives come together and you can talk about STEM or anything you want together. I completely agree with Lillian when she says that the best memories happen during mealtime because mine were like this too. I remember like we used to have, have a lot of cups at the table and they had spaces like on the bottom of it so that you could make a pile of them and we used to compete to see who can make the biggest pile of cups. And it could be like fun or it could be a big mess if you did it wrong so it was something super fun to do mine would probably be after our one of our final dinners uh running back home in the rain 15 minutes to Eigenman dorm and absolutely laughing the whole way there and it was just such a bonding experience <laughs> My core memory was <clears throat> we did like a field trip to the zoo and it was a really fun break from all of the research. And I got like sloth stuffed animals with my best friends and I brought it to college. So it always makes me think of that. Wonderful.
Well, thank you all for coming to this webinar to hear a little bit about SSP. Thank you to our alumni for taking the time out of their evening to um, to share a little bit about this with our applying community. Um, there are certainly going to be more questions, and I see them rolling in right now. And so if you haven't gotten connected to our Discord, um, I'm going to link that in the chat right now. It's going to probably get lost in the chat. So if you if you miss it, if you go to the apply page on our website, right where the application is that I showed you, one of those bullet points has the link to the Discord. Um, and so people are there chatting, being conversational, having a good time, um, getting to know each other and answering some of the, the questions that people have about the daily life of SSP and all of that fun stuff. That's where a lot of these folks are from on the call as well, uh, who have joined us for this session um, and the alumni. So. So feel free to check that out and um, we look forward to connecting with you in the future.